know what you're gonna say. It's it's not even spring yet. Yeah, the snow's still falling here in Utah, and but there's one thing you gotta do. It's that time of year to get that mountain bike down in the garage and to start working on it, and get it ready for the trail. You gotta do it. All right, so we're here to talk to Mike Ingberson, who is the owner, main technician, and mountain biking enthusiast. And so uh, he's gonna give us the top five tips to get our bikes ready to put on the trail. I know it's still snowing, but you know how you are and you know how I am. We wanna get with it. We wanna get on the trail. Let's see if he's here. Is Mike here? Awesome. It's Grant. Hey, hey how, how you doing? I'm good. Hey, you got a minute to give us some tips on getting our bikes on the trail this uh, spring? Sure, let's do it. All right, let's go. So, you know, it's it's been a good long winter. We've got tons of snow and everything. Been excited to be up on the mountain. But right now, I'm really starting to feel the spring pull. Let's <laughs> get on the trail with the bike. Yeah. And uh, so are some of our viewers. So, hey, can you tell us how, what would you do to get that bike off the rack in the garage dust it off, get it ready for the trail sure. this spring. Well, right, I mean, you mentioned dusting it off. Of course, you wanna clean it. You don't wanna pressure wash anything. If you use a pressure washer, you'll get water in the bearings, uh, in the bottom bracket, and the hubs, uh, and it can cause corrosion and rust. So you just wanna take, you know, maybe a hose or a spray bottle and just get the frame wet and then take a rag and do a wipe down. This is a new bike, so this bike's already nice and clean, but if you just take a, a rag and clean things, um, the chain is all gunky. Uh, you can take the chain completely off the bike and soak it in some degreaser or something to, to clean it well. Uh, I typically don't do that. I actually just wipe it good with a rag and reapply some chain lube. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we do a tune up here, um, get your bike ready for the spring. And if you want, I can go through some of the things I do for a tune up. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Cause I'm not really sure how to, uh, you know, usually when I lube it up, I lube up my chain, it turns into kind of a big gunky mess. So, you know, maybe <laughs> well, you can help you know, us out. Like, what depends it... too on the type of chain lube that you're using. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give us like one or two different kinds of uh, lube that you would use well okay so sorry i got a lot of different lubes here but mm -hmm. these are probably my two most common mm -hmm. squirt is a wax chain lube the wax dries and forms you know kind of a wax coating that mm -hmm. does not attract dirt and dust and sand like an oil lube will mm -hmm. so we live in utah it's very dry dusty uh, sandy in some places and so a lot of times an oil on the chain is not your best option. This is the best wax lube that I've ever come across. It lasts the longest. Mm -hmm. There are other wax lubes out there that work fine though they just maybe don't last quite as long. But uh, anyway, this is a, an oil lube. It does have an additive in it mm -hmm. that makes it a little drier, uh, kind of pasty so it's not as bad as, as a wet um, oil chain lube. So, so I get it. I get that on. How do I actually apply it so that it doesn't? Uh, well, this or, bike you know, is kinda... brand new, but I'll I'll use this stuff. So basically, I just spin backwards while I apply the lube. Go around a couple of times, three That's times, it. something like that. Yep. Spin it a few more times uh -huh. after you've applied it. Take a rag. Wipe off any excess. And if your chain is still dirty after doing that, mm -hmm. apply more lube, mm -hmm. do it again. And that's usually sufficient for cleaning a chain. Gets it clean. If My it's really gunky, you may have to take the chain off completely, soak it in some degreaser. Excellent. So I check my chain, I'm ready to go on my chain. What do you check yeah. next? Well, um, I, okay, so for a tune-up, we adjust derailers, front and rear, uh, make sure that they're indexed correctly, and there's 
So for, so for a layperson like me, when you say index, that means that they're shifting correctly? Is that kind of the same thing or yeah, is it more to it than that? <laughs> it just means that the cable tension is correct so that it shifts up and down each cog without skipping around. Excellent. So it's kind of hard to explain uh -huh. on a short video, but um, you know, when you push on the shifter, it pulls the cable and shifts up to a bigger cog uh, to an easier gear. And if you go to shift up to an easier gear, and it doesn't shift up, then the cable's not tight enough. So you have to unscrew your derail your barrel adjuster here uh, to tighten the cable up a little bit. Okay. Same is true going down. If you go to drop it down to a harder gear, a smaller cog, and it won't drop down, then the cable's too tight. So you screw the barrel adjuster in a little bit to loosen the cable. Okay, so I'm gonna run through all my gears, gonna make sure that they're gonna shift correctly, you're not getting some skipping, etc. That's yep. pretty good, then what do I do? Same goes with the front derailleur. Um, just make sure that it's shifting properly. This These are hydraulic disc brakes. So you wanna feel, make sure that you have, you know, plenty of power there, that the lever's not coming into the grip um, you want to inspect the brake pads, make sure the pads are not worn down to where you're going to start to get metal on metal. Uh, that will ruin your rotor as well, so you don't want to run your pads too low. Um, and then you want to spin it and make sure that the rotor is not rubbing on the, the pads as it comes around. If it is, then chances are your rotor is warped. So I have a tool over here that has a special gauge on it that I can see if your rotor is warped and I can bend it straight. I've got some special wrenches that you can actually put on the rotor and tweak in or out to straighten the rotor so that it doesn't rub on the brake pads. The fork um, over time will get dirt and dust past these seals. These are some wiper seals mm -hmm. to keep your stanchions clean. Uh, you have oil down here in the lowers to lubricate the stanchions. They slide on a couple of bushings inside of here. Um, dust will get inside, you know, past the dust seal here and make the oil dirty. And that's gonna potentially cause damage to these stanchions that'll wear on the stanchions if you don't change the oil and change out these wiper seals. So good uh, rule of thumb is, you know, depending on how much you ride, uh, once a year is a good idea to have your fork serviced. Um, and yeah, we'll replace these dust seal, dust wipers. And then you wanna do just a bolt check. So grab your wrench of choice Mm -hmm. and go around and just make sure everything's tight. You know, tighten your stem, your handlebar, just make sure everything is snug. Your crank especially, uh, we see that the crank will often come loose. So give that a nice little tug and make sure that that's tight. Uh, check your axle skewers, um, you know, just go through and make your derailleur. You see sometimes that the derailleurs come loose. Um, your brake calipers, you know, it's just a good idea to throw a wrench on everything and make sure that you're not gonna, something's not gonna come loose on the trail, cause problems. So when you clean a bike, you often will inspect it while you go. So keep your bike clean, and that's when you're gonna notice if you have loose spokes, mm -hmm. or if you have, like you say, maybe a crack in your frame. Uh, spin your wheel and make sure that the wheel is true and isn't, you know, going side to side. Um, 
or like, you know, if you have any loose spokes. Uh -huh. uh, probably the most common thing that we see is flat tires, and they're often caused by the goat head thorns. Uh -huh. And um, my, our experience is that thorn resistant tubes uh, don't work that great. Okay. Uh, the best thing to do is to put some sealant in the tubes. Mm -hmm. We have stuff here called Flat Attack. Yeah. It's not the slime garbage that you see at uh, Walmart. Mm -hmm. um, this is a much better product and it will save you from flats, from small punctures. If you get a thorn, you just pull it out, seals it up. So that might be a good thing to do is to add some sealant to your tubes. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You bet. Sure glad we dropped by. Thanks for coming. And uh, we'll uh, see happy trails. <laughs> All right. Want to put a plug in for Utah Mountain Biking? Of course. Utah Mountain Biking, Utah County's premier bike shop. <laughs> well, you guys have been around for, what, about 20 years or so? I mean, it's been a long well, time that you and... Technically, it's yeah, it's been, we're in our 19th year. I've been in this building now going on uh, 12 plus years, almost 13 years. Oh my god. Well, it's fantastic. And if you go to utahmountainbiking.com, there are a ton of resources there for you on um, as far as seeing the trails, etc. Um, boy. Uh, and, yeah, Bruce, and Bruce Argyle does a tremendous job with his videos. So Yes, Bruce is awesome. Bruce Argyle did all the trail write-ups for yeah. all the trails in the state. If you want any information on any of the trails, uh, go to the website and read his report. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it.